This is Twit. Google is now a car maker. The company unveiled a self-driving car and prototypes, basically, that are designed and built not by some car company, not by the Prius people at Toyota, but by Google X Labs. Google said in a blog post that they're planning to build about 100 of these cars. Jack Stewart writes about transport technology for the BBC, and he joins us here now. Welcome, Jack. Hello. Jack, can you describe Google's self-driving car physically for our audio listeners? Yeah, I think the word that really sums it up and the word that they use too is cute. They've designed it to look uh, as unthreatening as possible. I think the idea here is to make it as acceptable as possible in urban environments. You know, if we see these cars rolling around like this by themselves, no driver in them, you uh, perhaps would be a little more intimidated to see a big white SUV like the company uses now than one of these little uh, funny little cars. They almost look like a, a golf cart at the moment. They have a spinning sensor on the top, small wheels pushed right to the corners. And then the company says the front is designed to be particularly pedestrian friendly. So it's got a, some sort of foam padding material at the front. The windscreen's made of a flexible material. So I guess if the very worst case should happen and this car should hit a pedestrian, then it will hopefully mitigate some of the damage. And they're, and they're you know, the, bat, the, the Dark Knight, the Batmobile does self-drive as well, but you're right, that would be too intimidating, right? <laughs> and probably not very pedestrian friendly. <laughs> exactly. No, I think that would actually kill someone, especially with the flamethrowers. The Batmobile is uh, pedestrian friendly in the sense that it kills you instantly and so there's no suffering uh, before oh, you right. die. So, you know, and it's a good idea to keep it uh, pedestrian friendly and also friendly looking because this is kind of a scary thing. This is a challenging concept for people, I think. Don't you think, Jack? I mean, uh, you can imagine a scenario where Google wants to make these legal, and of course they do, and they're working with governments across the United States and around the world to make these eventually legal. But it would have to be significantly more safe than a car driven by a human being in order to be acceptable by the public, don't you think? Yes, but interestingly, that's not a huge challenge because cars driven by humans are, in fact, hugely unsafe. Uh, human error accounts for 90% of all road traffic accidents. Uh, so removing that from the equation would actually make these cars a lot safer straight away. It's interesting, we're seeing a bit of video here of the car in action that Google released. And one of the things that struck us watching it was the type of people they featured in this video. It's a lot of elderly people. Um, it is a couple of blind people, I believe, in here. So they're really stressing how these vehicles could help with mobility for people who just can't drive themselves. Um, people who, for one reason or another, uh, can't get behind the wheel could actually get behind the on-off button, I suppose, you would have in one of these cars and get where they need to go. Now, here in it's the Bay Area, we see, we see self-driving cars by Google every once in a while going down the freeway. Uh, there's a person behind the wheel, and they tend to be regular, uh, you know, sort of right out of the factory kind of cars that have been retrofitted for self-driving. What's the point of building a car from scratch? What was wrong with the retrofitted prototypes? Yeah, so the current vehicles, they started with Toyota Prius vehicles and then moved on to uh, Lexus hybrids. So those are the ones you sometimes see around Silicon Valley now. These new vehicles, the company hopes, will be a, a technology test bed. So they'll really allow them to sort of rethink this whole idea of what it means to have a car without a human driver. The current vehicles, they're having to modify a car that was built for human input, a car that has a steering wheel, that has pedals, that has all these human-centric controls. In a driverless car, you don't need any of those. In fact, their car won't have any of those. It will have them put back in. It will have them sort of retrofitted with steering wheels and pedals to make them road legal so they can test them in California. But ultimately, driverless cars won't need these. And do cars need to be four-seater? Uh, or are most of them actually is, is two-seater plenty? Um, Cars that drive themselves and don't need parking spaces, for example, because, you know, you summon this car on your smartphone when you want it, it drives you where you want to go, and then it goes off and does the same for somebody else. It doesn't spend most of its time parked like a current car. So do they have to look like current cars? Do they have to have the same luggage capacities as current cars? Do they have to have the same crash protection? If they are inherently safer, can they be built lighter and smaller like Google seems to be going for here and therefore more fuel efficient? So I think it's really an opportunity for the company to start getting at some of these quite basic questions in a sort of a, a very much a prototype way. Uh, but then perhaps, you know, just asking the questions will help uh, some of the answers evolve over time. Um, but the idea of no manual override seems 
really uncomfortable, don't you think? Yeah, uh, it it does, because I think we're also used to this paradigm of the way that we drive now. But I actually had a ride in the back of one of the company's current cars uh, last week, the week before. And um, I was amazed by how quickly I felt comfortable. I was sat in the back because the cars at the moment always have two test drivers. So they sit up front. And it was really no different to being able to relax and accept that a taxi driver was in control of your vehicle. Um, the, the car drove pretty smoothly. Uh, it seemed to be able to take on board the fact that there were pedestrians around, there were cyclists around. We were driving around Mountain View in California. It's a pretty busy area, pretty busy streets. And I was able to relax and just accept it. And so I wonder how quickly, if we get to experience these cars without steering wheels, how quickly we'll accept them. We already see similar things around, for example, Heathrow Airport in London. They have little transporter shuttles that can take you, I think, just to the parking garage and back. So along a very fixed route and in a very basic way. But no need for a human override beyond a, a big red kill switch, I suppose. How do you actually tell the car where you want to go? The, the prototypes that they have have a single button for starting and stopping, but how do you actually say that you want to go to a specific location? I think, again, these are details that need to be worked out, but the most likely scenario I could see is a smartphone app. You, similar to something like Uber at the moment, say you would dial in, tell it where your location is now, uh, and the car would be dispatched to you. You would tell it where you want to go. The car would figure out the best route and take you there, drop you off, pop up with maybe whatever charge there was for that journey or however this model is going to work and then go off and do the same for somebody else.